Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Unity of Wilmington and our hybrid Sunday service. We have a new monthly introduction song, so pay attention to what's on the screen as you join us and welcome each other and us to the Sunday service. Thank you. Let the Holy Spirit shine a light on you. Let the Holy Spirit shine a light on you. When you wake up in the morning, it's a brand new day. Just forget about your worries. You know it's time to hear you say. done everybody we learned fast and we learned well thank you celebration singers and welcome to unity of wilmington i'm laney bogger i'm your platform host for the day i would like to welcome all of you here for the first time anybody here for the first time please raise your hands yay <laughs> welcome our ushers will give you a welcome packet if you care to sign out the information sheet Please feel free to do so. Anybody here for the second or third time? Even better, yes. Keep coming back like the rest of us who keep coming back and coming back because it's a good place to be on a Sunday morning or really any other time. This Sunday morning, the beginning of the 4th of July weekend, I'd like to introduce who our major players are. In our sound tech booth is Christopher Dean who keeps the lights on and the film rolling and the cyberspace piece going. We have our celebration singers. We have Teresa Rodriguez, who will be doing our daily word. We have wonderful musicians. We have Justin, we have Mitch, and then we have Katie Deese. Our soloist for the day is Terrell Williams, and our speaker for the day is Dr. Harris. You'll be hearing from all of them in one capacity or other at some point in the next hour. It's the first Sunday of the month. Guess what that is? Birthday Sunday. Anybody have a birthday in July? Whoa, we have July birthdays. Well, let us please sing to you. And all of you in out in cyberspace, I welcome you too. We didn't forget you. We know you're out there. 
please join us in all we do and put your comments on the chat line and we'll talk to you soon. Meanwhile, please join me in our statement of faith. There is only one presence and one fact active in the universe and in my life. God, the good omnipotence. Therefore, we are beloved expressions of God. We, I am here for a holy purpose. I am in the right place at the right time right now. Thank you very much. Teresa. Everyone, and today's daily word. This is a publication that Unity Village puts out, and you can call them and order this. And we also have a copy out front if you'd like to purchase one of these daily words. And today, the daily word is guidance. And the affirmation is I seek, trust, and follow my guidance. And why don't we all say that together? I seek, trust, and follow my guidance. Seeking divine guidance means turning out information and opinions and turning inward. Then, with an open heart and quiet mind, I can better feel the nudge of my intuition, my inner voice. I receive divine guidance much in the way flowers in a field soak up sunshine. Just as following the sun is innate for them, I have the instinct to trust my inner knowing. Even if my guidance surprises me, I trust it to lead me on the path to my highest good. I follow where I feel called to go. I heed the still small voice within and pay particular attention to the serendipitous circumstances I find along the way. I seek, trust, and follow my guidance. As I do, I deepen my relationship with God knowing wherever I go, I do not travel alone. From the Bible, Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 11. The Lord will guide you continually. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. And now, Terrell. <laughs> To dream the impossible dream, to find the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go. unrightable wrongs and to love pure and chaste from afar to try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star my quest to follow that star no matter how hopeless no matter how far to fight for the right without question or pause to be willing to march march into hell for a heaven And my heart lies peaceful and calm when I'm laid to my rest. And the world will be better for this. That one.
and men scorned and covered with scars still strong with this last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable the unreachable the unreachable star and I'll always dream the impossible dream and I'll reach the unreachable Wow. I didn't know if you heard me harmonizing back there. I mean, I, I thought I was doing it. Man, let's give Tyrell another hand. I mean, you know, we have a saying in marketing, if that doesn't set you on fire, your wood is wet. wet. <laughs> Ooh, Tyrell, thank you. I mean, I can feel it, man. I, I was just, as he was singing, I said, I'm going to add that song to my repertoire. <laughs> because, I mean, it just says so much, doesn't it? Dream, and that's really what it's about, dreaming the impossible dream. And beautiful. Thank you so much. Let me move all my stuff up here today. We got to have a special day today. This is our Independence Day in so many ways. We take a little sip of water. I was so much into your song, I forgot to drink the water. I mean, you had me mesmerized. I go into a deep state very easily, and I was gone. <laughs> Before we get into our message today, it's so important to put ourselves in the, the state of rest and the state of peace and relaxation. For our listeners, for the people watching us in cyberspace, thank you for being here this Independence Day weekend, and get into our vibration, get into the meditation, sit up in your seats, and be as if you are right here with us. Today we do a meditation, and I call it a free-to-be meditation. So sit straight up in our seats, put your feet flat on the floor, close your outer eyes, and open your inner eyes. Take a deep breath and hold it. Let it out slowly. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. And just feel the vibration of peace and relaxation and coolness move down from the top of our head to our face to our chest to our heart that coolness of peace and relaxation just relaxes relaxes each and every molecule and atom in our body let that peaceful Peacefulness, move on down to our hips and to our legs and to our feet. And in this space of peace and relaxation, our focus today is to visualize our lives when we are free. Free to be healthy. 
see yourself full of health, see your body vibrant. Know that each and every cell in your body works for good. I am healthy. Let us affirm that together. I am healthy. Free to be happy. Oh, happiness and just full of joy, smiling. See yourself smiling. See yourself in that joyful, happy state. Then all is well. Let that happiness seep in. I am happy. Let us affirm that together. I am happy. move through your body, seeing yourself smiling again and again in complete joy. Free to love. See yourself in that loving state. Loving yourself in the mirror. Loving your family and your friends and those close to you. Loving all mankind. See yourself receiving love. A vibration of love that comes from those who care about you. I am love. Together. I am love. Finally, see yourself in complete abundance, having all the things you desire to have, being the person you want to be, traveling to the places you want to see, in that space of abundance. I experience abundance together. I experience abundance. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And in this space of health, happiness, love, yourselves a hand. I love the musicians. Thank you so much, man. I could just feel it. Wow, give them a hand. I tell you, Katie, we need to write that, whatever it is. <laughs> Woo! Man. What a beautiful, what a beautiful, beautiful day. This is the Sunday, as they say, this is our Sunday, and we rejoice in it. We are joyful in it. We are grateful to be here. This is the first Sunday of the seventh month. Isn't that amazing? Where did the first six months go? Those of you out there in uh, cyberspace, I know you're saying, man, is this July already? Yes, it is. This first half of the year, though, the fact that we are here is critical. You know, we have to give blessings. You know, so many times people focus on what they don't have and don't look at what they do have. We're here. We're alive and we're clear. I'm here, I'm alive, and I'm clear. Let's say that together. I'm here, I'm alive, and I'm clear. Woo! Well, this day, this first Sunday, is also the second day of the last half of the year. You know, when you look at it like that, it's like, I don't have time to do anything. <laughs> I better get rolling. But, you know, 
when it's the second day of the last day of the year, it just says, we got to get serious. So our topic for today is choose your independence. But you know, when we set our topics in advance, Lanny, we set them based on our consciousness of where we are at that time. I don't like to lay out topics too far in advance because I might not feel that. <laughs> you know, what are you speaking about in August? Who knows? <laughs> How will you feel in August? I tune into what you, the vibrations I get from you. So you don't know how you'll feel in August. I, you know, so we assume we're going to be good. So when I chose the topic, it was choose your own independence. But in my teachings, in my revelations, in my meditations, I wanted to change it and call it claim your own independence. Claim your own independence. In our scripture today, we're going to be looking at some scriptures. Of course, Proverbs, that 23rd chapter and the 7th verse, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We always focus on Romans, the 12th chapter, 2nd verse. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we're going to look today at the parable of the prodigal son. Luke 15th chapter, the 11th through the 31st verses. I love to open with a quote, and Nelson Mandela, and I'm, I'm if there's anybody who's qualified to speak on peace <laughs> and power and joy and sacrifice, it's Nelson Mandela. And he said, to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and embraces the freedom. You know, when he spent the 27 years in the prison, all he had to do was change his mind. That, that was all. They just wanted him to think a new thought. Don't forget all this freedom stuff. <laughs> all you got to do is say, we're doing a good job. <laughs> and you can walk out the door. That shows the character of a man. Bob Marley said something interesting. He said, it's better to die fighting for freedom than be a prisoner all the days of your life. Would you agree? And I think that's really what the American Revolution was about. Rather than to spend their time in bondage uh, with a king who did not seem to care to change their minds, to change their time and take action. So this day, we claim our independence. And we claim it as a birthright. See, when I thought before it was a decision, but it's more than a decision. The fact that we are alive, created by God, means it must be our birthright because God created us to have joy, to live a good, abundant life. So then it must be our birthright. And when I went back, I went back to the prodigal son. And you know the story of the prodigal son. He got his inheritance, kind of like most of us. I know I did it. I was the prodigal son. I didn't have that much inheritance to get, but whatever it was, I got it and spent it away. <laughs> okay. I'm sure many of you, any other prodigal sons or daughters here, <laughs> say, raise your hand in your mind's eye. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> and I surely got to that point, and I'm sure that many of you get to that point in your life where everything has gone bad, everything has failed. As you know, the prodigal son was in the pig pen of life. He was feeding somebody else's pigs. He didn't even own the pigs. He's feeding somebody else's pigs and hoping they leave him something to eat. Now, that's pretty bad. But in spite of all that, he said this. At the 17th chapter, he says, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough to bread while I perish here with hunger? And so that's really right now on this second day of the last part of the year that we have to claim our birthright. It is our birthright because we are human beings, because God created us. God does not create junk. And so therefore, if we're here and alive, we have a good purpose. And all the good stuff we want, we're entitled to it. So in preparing this Declaration of Independence, clearly the colonists made an assessment of their condition. I'm going to read a little bit from the uh, 
declaration because I think it gives you an understanding of the frame of mind. And, you know, when I was reading it, I was just impressed that, what is it, nearly 300 years ago, people were writing just better than they do right now. <laughs> Frankly. And so the, the colonists were not happy, and they took action on it. And I want to put this in a personal experience. This idea of your own independence is maybe we're not happy with where we are right now. And so there's a process that I call a process of awareness. I was talking it over with Sandra, and she, you know, when you get a, a, a thumbs up from Sandra, you know you've done something. Please give Sandra a hand. She's feeling good. Sandra, this, yes. I'm so glad because last Sunday she said, I just can't make it. But today she's like, I'm up. Let's go. <laughs> You're late. <laughs> I know she, when she starts giving orders, you know she's okay. <laughs> Alan knows that, right? <laughs> when you start getting orders, you know, are you feeling good today, honey? Okay. So this idea of where we are in our life is really about awareness. Harriet Tubman said, she could have saved a lot more slaves if they knew they were slaves. So awareness of condition, three levels of awareness. One, awareness of condition, awareness of purpose, and awareness of execution. So let's look at this idea of awareness of condition. We're at the midpoint of this year. We must make an assessment of where we are right now. We have to take a checkup from the neck up in our thinking and from the neck down in our feeling. So neck up, heart down. And ask ourselves, are you happy? Really and truly, are you satisfied with where you are right now? I'm not. Anybody who's not satisfied with where they are right now, raise your hand. Yeah. I didn't think I'd be here. You know, when I wrote out my plans, I'm sure when you wrote out your plans, you figured by this time this year, man, you'd be well on the way. But isn't it interesting how life comes at you? <laughs> how stuff happens. <laughs> Unexpected things happen. And that clock, the time clock, is always running. So it's time this day to make our own personal declaration. We're going to de declare our independence from being unhappy. Declare our independence from being broke. We have more month at the end of the money. <laughs> I tell you, I've lived that. And, you, and that works until your credit cards all get maxed out. And then you go like, oh, wow. Now I got no month at the end of the money and no credit left. But isn't it interesting how you find a way? You don't lose everything. And it, many times you say, man, I'd really like to not have to deal with that. I'd like to take steps so I don't have to get to that point. <laughs> so that I don't have to get my back against the wall to do my best work. And so that's why we call this, this awareness con of condition. Fannie Lou Hamer used to say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. But as a, as a new thought person, words are power. So, you know, I'm sick and tired of being broke. Right there, you don't want to identify with that. She, wasn't, she obviously didn't go to unity. But, <laughs> <coughs> but we're never sick. We're healthy, but we are tired of where we are, and we want to change. So I ask this question. And a lot of this lesson today is like homework. Okay, this is like the homework. When you go home, what is going on in your life right now that you'd like to stop? And make a note of that. When you get home, just sit and think about that. What's going on in my life right now that I'd like to stop? Maybe you need to take better care of your health. Maybe you need to take better care of your finances. But whatever it is, you got to do something. And that's the awareness. If you're not aware of a condition, you can't fix it. If you don't acknowledge what you don't like about your situation, you'll never adjust it. 
What happens in our minds is when we accept the condition that we're not happy in, eventually we normalize it and think it's okay. Being broke is good. <laughs> you know, all good Christians are broke. You, know? <laughs> you start to normalize your own situation, which then perpetuates it. So we have to have a desire to be happy, a desire to be free, a desire to live an abundant life. And if it's not happening, take responsibility for it. We may not be in the pig pens of life, but we might be in the neighborhood. <laughs> okay. Everybody knows your own condition. And when you look at where you are right, you're like, you know, I ain't in the pig pens, but mm, I could do better. So this idea of awareness of our condition gives us the facility take change and make changes in it. I, I did something. I, I see what I did. Wait a minute. I got my stuff out of line here. Wait a minute. Hold on. Who's running this show here? Who's in charge? Where are they? What do they do with my notes? <laughs> I'm firing them. I'm just looking at my notes, and I'm like, I don't remember this. <laughs> okay. So let, let's just back up a little minute. We kind of got ahead of ourselves. It's okay, because that way we know where we're going. <laughs> 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 you know, one of the things about being a speaker is to learn how to roll with the punches. You know, no matter what it is, you always have a way to, to just keep going. So if we look at the idea of freedom, that's what we can say. If we look at the idea of the Declaration of Independence, what can we learn from what they did that can help us? Well, number one, the, the Declaration of Independence really had four parts. And the reason it was done was because the colonists were unhappy. Part one said they, de they, they declared the reasons that America wanted to be free, leave the British Empire. Part two, the preamble says, lays out the principles that are self-evident. These ideas that are important for you to move to the next level. Part three le lays out the grievances, all the things that the king didn't do. And part four says the declaration to be free. And we, I'll read a little bit of it. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them to another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. And so in our lives, if we're going to be free, we've got to lay out what's wrong, what the challenges are. Enumerate them, because once you... Once you write it down, you can fix it. It goes on to say, and this is the part we often hear, the preamble. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They wrote. You know, when you look, when you really study the, the men who put this together, these are some very intellectual, learned people, Thomas Jefferson. I mean, this was, the, 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 you might say, the, the power brokers of the day. Once they made this decision to leave the, the British Empire, they took action. And that's a powerful piece. When they took action, they took action at peril. You know, the moment you declare yourself to be free, King George didn't say, well, no problem, kids. <laughs> it's been a good run. We've had 200 years, you know, like, go for it, you know, thumbs up. Anytime you decide to change your life, there's always pushback. So as you go forth into this next part of this year, when you make that decision, when you analyze your condition and decide that you're not happy with where you are right now and you decide to make a change, you're going to get pushback. 
So once we are aware of our condition, we can take action. In the prodigal son, it says, when he came to himself, he looked up and went to his father. In other words, once you understand your condition, it's not enough to just understand it. You've got to do something about it. The prodigal son got up and moved, went to his father, just saying, let me in the door. But what the universe, the message here is this, the moment you make a move on changing your life, the universe rushes to meet you. You always have to prime that pump. You always have to step out. But the moment you do, and this is powerful because many of you have decisions right now that you're getting ready to make, and they may be couched in fear. And when you look at your birthright as being a beloved creation of an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving God, then you can get past the fear. If this is what God is telling me to do, when I'm listening and in my meditation, then I'll do it. You'll make a step in the bridges there. Once we're aware of our condition, we can take steps to change it. And that's what we call the awareness of execution. What actions must we take between now and the end of this year to change the outcome that will happen if we don't take those actions? You see, the, the interesting thing about life is you don't have a choice not to play. You can't say, well, Lord, look, I'm tired. You know, I worked hard. I'm just going to sit here on the sideline. I know I'll be. No, you always got to take action. You always have to make a choice. You have to do something. So on this personal level, we have to be honest with ourselves. And we should do a couple of things. One, make a list of the things that are blocking us, that are stopping us, that are holding us back. And that's what the colonists did. They made a list of the things that they were complaining about. So learn that lesson. We must claim happiness. Happiness is always there. Joy is always there. Abundance is always there. What keeps us from getting it is negative thinking, limitation thinking. So we must execute over these next few months, next seven months, four changes. Number one, we have to change our thinking. We have to eliminate all of the negative thinking from our lives. If this bucket this golden bucket represents your life. Then you have to get rid of negative thinking. You have to look. Negative thoughts. I cast away negative thinking. Let's say that together. I cast away negative thinking. When our seminars, we used to actually have a, like a burning bowl type activity. Get all the negative thoughts, the negative... I want a list of all the negative people. Man, you may need a computer. <laughs> <laughs> Write those names and put them in the burning bowl. But you see, nature abhors a vacuum. It's not enough to get rid of the negative thoughts. You have to. And these are actually, these Fourth of July, Liberty Golden, silver do golden Dollars. You have to then put positive thoughts into your life. No more thoughts of lack and limitation, thoughts of abundance and possibility. Second thing we must do, we must change our emotions. You know, emotions are vibrations. We talk about the vibrational universe, the fact that the vibrations in your life are what attracts you. When we talk about the law of attraction, it's really about the law of vibration. That when you desire something deeply, that means your energy level, your vibration is high. And when you sincerely desire the things you want, they come to you. Have you learned that when you do stuff and you really want something badly? Have you noticed you always get it? The only way to fail is to quit. And so negative, negative emotions like fear, insecurity, jealousy, whew, Jealousy is terrible. But all these negative emotions. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I get rid of negative emotions together. I get rid of negative emotions. Once again, nature abhors a vacuum. You get rid of negative emotions by replacing them positive emotions. I embrace positive emotions together. I embrace positive emotions. Now, habits. You know, in the beginning, we create our habits, but in the end, our habits create us, and our habits can mess us up. Woo! Sandy used to beat me on the head about the habit of being late. You know, anything you have excuses for doesn't solve it. I had all the excuses in the world about being late, the traffic. I was going across the bridge. Those who come across that bridge, you know, some days you like the traffic. Well, you should have started earlier. <laughs> okay. But habits will undermine us. Habits can, I'll tell you something. Habits are like silent killers. And the number one habit that will slow you down this second half of the year is the habit of procrastination. Procrastination is a thief of dreams. Procrastination will keep you from flying. Positive habits. Got it. Replace these negative habits, these bad habits, with positive habits. Let's balance the room. <laughs> Don't think all the negativity is over here, right? Negativity, negativity can be anywhere. But you have to replace, and this is one of the most powerful pieces. Habits have a way of giving us a path. You know, in business, you say, set up a system. Though we got a lot of business people here, and system means save yourself time, energy, and money. Once you have a system, you don't have to think about it anymore. So your habits can undermine you, even though you have all the good intentions. And so let's Get some positive habits. Let's get positive habits of excellence. That whatever you do from this year, from this day on, you do it to the best of your ability. Positive habit of completion. That you finish what you start. I have so many friends that have, you know, you all have great ideas, big starters. <laughs> but never finishers. Positive habits of timeliness. Because time is always the master. Time can slip away and all your dreams fall into the sand. Positive habits of organization. Sandra said, everything has a place and what? A place for everything. So develop positive habits. And then finally, if you want this year to be great, if you want this last these next six months to be incredibly productive, you have to be keenly aware of who's around you, of the people you permit to come into your life. You know, the people you permit to come into your life, you really attract them. That's a hard lesson sometimes. If you keep meeting the same old no good person in different suits, <laughs> with a different hat on, but the same old bird over and over, the same old person over and over, it's not them, it's you. And so relationships are so powerful because relationships give you access to the mastermind principle. They say birds of a feather flock together. You get great positive minds together, they can do positive things. But the universe is harmonic. You get great negative minds together and they can do terrible things. You look at some of the stuff going in the, on in the world. You get a group of negative minds, they'll bomb a country into non-existence. And so relationships are key because that's a part of our birthright. We are relational people. You know, it's interesting, in the prodigal son, the brother who had stayed there was all upset when the father got the ring and killed the fatted calf. But that's symbolic that the universe doesn't care about what you did before. It cares about what you're doing now. And so, let's get rid of negative people. Let's say goodbye, negative people. Goodbye, negative people. And boy, this was the one. I tell you this, a golden eagle. Replace negative people with positive people.
to love you, to lift you up, to respect you, to become the wind beneath your wings. So this day, was this helpful today? Are you all ready to go out and go to work? All right. Well, this is a day that we recognize our birthright, that we are, as human beings, we are entitled to joy, happiness, health, happiness, love, prosperity, success, all the good things. That when we look at those three levels of awareness, when we're aware of our condition, when we can be honest with ourselves and not make excuses, when we can fix it. Awareness of purpose, that we are the beloved creation of an all-powerful, all-loving God and the awareness of execution that we have the power to change anything we desire to make it the way we want it to be. Let's stand up and close out. Whoopee! That's very interesting. I'll say it and you repeat after me. This is my year for health. This is my year for health. Happiness. Happiness. Love. Love. Success. Prosperity. Prosperity. I have positive thoughts in all situations. I have positive thoughts in all situations. I entertain only positive emotions. I entertain only positive emotions. I develop good habits. I develop good habits. I surround myself with people. Who love me. Who encourage me. Who lift me up. Who are the wind beneath my wings. Flap your wings and give yourselves a hand. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! You may be seated. Those in the cyberspace, thank you for being with us. I enjoyed this. What a great audience we have here. When you're in, I'm just gonna say, when you're in New York, come by. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when you're in Wilmington, North Carolina, please come out to Unity of Wilmington. Now we're going to have our offering. And those of you in cyberspace, send money. <laughs> I'm looking you right in the face. We appreciate you. You know, when you come in our church and you see the love and, and how we've been growing and going, then be a part of it. We appreciate your support. Let us take up our offering together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive, and so it is. Ushers? Right of me, gratitude of all.
Sounds like a meditation, doesn't it? Amen. Maybe we need to do a grateful meditation. Let us just be still a moment and dwell in this moment of gratitude that we are grateful, we are thankful for this offering. Those of you in the room who have shared your love, shared your money substance, deeply appreciate it. It is our mission to circulate this, to take this money substance and send it on its way and bring good for all, for the church, for the community, for the world. And in this moment of gratefulness and thankfulness, we say, so it is. So it is. So it is. <laughs> Coming from no prophet, just an ordinary man. When I close my eyes, I see the world the way it should be. When we all walk hand in great exit song that is and how appropriate for this day 
Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Terrell. And thank you all for being here as we close out this day. Deep breath. Deep breath. Our announcements. Uh, we will have oneness blessings available in the back corner in front of the sound booth after the service. So if you would like to avail yourself of that, please participate. Teresa Rodriguez will be our prayer partner today. She will be over in this corner. It's like we have a boxing ring or something here. <laughs> and that corner is, and the, that corner is. We get blessed and we pray. Good stuff. The ladies' luncheon for the month of July will be on July 11th, which is the second Tuesday as opposed to the first because we celebrate the fourth. And that will be at the German Cafe downtown. Uh, in case you're interested, there is a sign-up sheet in the... Uh, Fellowship Hall, please join us, and that will be at noontime. Okay, the other announcements is our monthly uh, soul meditation will be on the 19th, a Wednesday at 7 o'clock here, and that will be mind, body, heart, and soul meditation, and that will be led by Teresa Rodriguez. So please join us. They are really very interesting experiences. They are not necessarily large groups of people, but there are people who are here where they're supposed to be at the right time in the right place. Imagine that. As we celebrate all our volunteers weekly and acknowledge who it takes to run this organization and make it smooth, relatively speaking, today we welcome and celebrate and appreciate our welcome team and our worship team. These are the people that greeted you and collected your divine offerings but also the people who put together and guide our service. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all who participated. And of course, we're always looking for more uh, because that's who we are. As human beings, we always wish to evolve. And you can participate on all different levels in all different ways. So please consider that when you look at what you're putting down on your list of things that you want to accomplish. Not only what you want to get rid of, but what you want to do and what you want to see. So please join me in our closing prayer. Please stand. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Now join us in our celebration singers as we close out.
watch over us and fill our lives with joy and happiness and abundance. May the wisdom of God guide and direct each and every step of our way. May the power of God surround us and protect us in every regard from all challenges. And together we know that all is well. And so it is.